everyone, and welcome to the Geek Group. I am uh, Steve. I am up here this evening in Master Control. I will be modifying a AT power supply to power a professional camera we had donated from a local station. Please stay tuned as I show you how to modify the AT power supply to power the camera. This professional camera uses a 4-pin XLR for power, which is kind of a specialized connection. Here I have a cable with the female, which will connect in here when I have this together. Pin 1 on this connector is ground, pin 4 is plus 12 volts. 12 volts is convenient for us because power supplies for computers have 12 volts. This power supply is an older AT supply, so we have a number of wires coming out of it here. Here is our main harness, which is used for a motherboard. We don't need that. Actually, that was not motherboard. That was hard drives. But anyway, this is actually our motherboard here. I do need some wires off this, so I'm going to save that for now. As you can see, it has a nice warning about high voltage and not opening. So, I think it's time we get out the screwdriver and get this thing apart. Screws on this power supply are located on the back and the top here. We have two screws on the top and three on the bottom here. Where the screws are will vary depending on the power supply you're using. So we will remove these screws and take a look inside. Alright, I now have all the screws out of our case so we can carefully remove the lid here. It should just slide right off. This particular one has a clear plastic cover between the case and the circuit board. Hang on to that. You're going to need to put it back in because if you don't, the power supply could short out if you push on the bottom of the case. So right now, all the wires are under this board and I can't get to them. So I'm going to, once again, remove the circuit board as well. As you dig in deeper, watch out for the uh, filter caps where power comes in because those still may have a charge on them. And that's potentially about 180 volts in America or probably close to 300 in Europe if you have 240 volt power. All right, so we have our power supply and all of our cables here. Careful on this side of the supply. You're going to see small transformers, some large capacitors. That's going to all be high voltage. And actually, the black and white coming over here will also be high voltage. So careful where you're in the power supply and what you touch. What we have interest in, actually, is the big pile of wires coming out over here. And in particular, we need the yellow and the black ones. Black is the ground for all the voltages. Yellow is 12 volts. Red, here's one, is 5 volts. Orange, which is only on the motherboard connector, is 3.3 volts. And the rest of them in there, there's a handful of colors. We have purple, gray, blue, and green are used to control the power supply and uh, indicator lights to tell the motherboard if it is on. So, in fact, I don't need this. So I'm just going to cut this connector right on out of here. So we don't need that. We have a large number of grounds here. So let's take a look at what we have. We have couple of yellows here. I'm going to actually shorten all this stuff so they're about the same length. So everything of interest power-wise is in this bundle over here between the yellow and blacks. There's a few control lines we're going to have to deal with over here. But other than that, we're going to be capping off most of these wires and leaving them unused. If you leave some length on them and just tape them up, you can always uh, use them later if you need this power supply for something else. You can make a nice little bench supply out of them. So first off, we're going to start with the orange wires here. Orange is 3.3 volts. So if you need a 3.3 volt power supply, this is a nice way to get one. So I've got a handful of wires here, and I have some tape. Let me cut a piece of tape off and get those taped up so they don't short out on anything else. So, wrap up that 
nice and tight. Make sure you go beyond the end of the wire and even fold it over a little bit so you know it, the wires cannot poke out the end. You don't want the tips of the wires coming out, so when you're done, you should have it wrapped all the way around the end of the wires. You can always remove that later if you need those voltages for another project. And we're going to do the same thing with the red wires. We're going to cut them all to about the same length. Grab a piece of tape and tape them off. So now we start back, wrap it up and beyond the end, fold it over a little bit, preferably without pressing the tape in the back, and wrap it back on down in a manner that nothing can come off or short. So once again the red wires are wrapped all the way around so nothing is left to be able to short. That leaves us with black and yellow which is ground and 12 volts. On the back over here we have four more wires. Blue is negative 12 volts. It usually only supplies about a half an amp or so which is not a lot, but occasionally you can use it and make a nice little uh, audio power supply, actually, if you need plus minus 12. So what I'm going to do on these is just fold them over and then tape them. That way the electrical tape cannot fall off and nothing can stick out as well. Because the end is folded back. So we're going to actually do that with a couple of wires we're not using that are just individuals. So we have blue here, which is negative 12 volts. For those of you who are interested in what all the wires are, again, we don't need that one for this. We have green, which actually is important for us. The next one we're going to have here is purple. Purple is used for uh, standby power. This is in the computer what would power uh, USB and a few and the clock when the computer is off. So if you want to put an LED or an indicator on your power supply, that says it has power but it's not active, the purple wire always has 5 volts present on it. So that's the always on power in the power supply. We will also tape that up because we're not putting any indicators on these. They are going to be always on. The last one here that we're going to tape up is gray. Gray is power on. It is the signal usually used to tell the motherboard that the power supply is on and it's ready for the computer to boot. Also another good spot to put an LED. You can use that one for a power indicator LED. If you wish, we're not going to worry about any of that on this one though. So once again I'm going to fold it over and tape it to itself here. Alright, we now have all the wires taped that we need to tape off and we're not using. Once again, we have 3.3 volts, 5 volts, negative 12 volts, the standby power, and the power indicator. What's left is the green wire. The green wire is important because the green wire is what tells the power supply to turn on. To turn the power supply on, you have to connect the green wire to ground, which is black. What I'm going to do is just add it to our black bundle when I hook up our wire. Another thing you could do is add a switch on the green wire so you can switch your power on and off. This one we're going to strip, seeing we're actually using it. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is actually get rid of a few of these grounds down here because I really don't need about a dozen of them. I'm going to keep a couple just if I ever want to use them for something else, but I'm going to cut these off nice and close to the board. There we go. And probably one more bundle as well. I think three grounds would be plenty for any expansion on this we're going to do. So I, there you go. As you can see, I cut these off right against the board. Being this short, they should not be able to short out against anything. They actually were exposed down there originally. So that leaves us with the green wire, which is our power on control, black, which is ground, and yellow, which is our plus 12 volts. I'm going to trim that up even a minute. 
and strip all the rest of these here. Make sure that how long do I want these to be? I'm going to actually trim these back a little bit further so everything lays down nice and neat and it's about the same length when I'm done with it all. And, uh, I'm going to make the uh, yellow wires about the same length as the blacks because the wire I'm going to be coming out of the power supply with has um, actually I'm going to get rid of this one here seeing it's just a lone wire on the bottom and I really don't need that three again I really only need one of these but I just don't feel like cutting them all off and this will allow us to hook additional cameras or something else to this power supply in the future should we ever really want to so here I have my wires they're all stripped and ready to hook up Next, I have, out of here, I have my power cable, which is terminated with the 4-pin XLR on one end, and right here it's just a bare wire. I need to find something to cut this with. Ah, there it is. Alright, so I'm going to carefully trim this back with a knife. Be careful when you're doing this, because if you cut too far, you'll cut into the jacket and insulation of the wires inside of here, and then they will risk shorting out against each other or something else which you do not want to happen. So carefully cut that off and then strip these wires as well. Alright, I wired this up earlier. I know I have the black wire which is going to be our ground connected to pin 1 and the white wire is pin 4 on the XLR. So, I bring the power supply back in here. The white wire goes with all of our yellows, that's our positive. And at this point there's a number of things you could do. You could either just put a wire nut on these or you can solder them. I think I'm going to solder them because I don't have a lot of wire nuts left. So I'm just going to twist these together here a little bit so they hopefully stay with each other. I've got my soldering iron here. It's all warmed up and ready to go. So I'm not going to give you a lesson in soldering on the brief one. Just get your wire uh, heated up there. You want to heat through your wire. You don't want to necessarily apply the solder directly to the iron beyond what it takes to get a little bit of contact. I've got a lot of wires here, so it's going to take a bit to get all of this heated up. There we go. This are getting really warm. A little bit more solder. The solder tends to follow the heat and where there's flux. So, we'll work this around to the other side here. There we go. So, we now have all of our yellows soldered together to our white power lead. And next we have grounds here. Included with the grounds is going to be the green power on wire. So if you want, you can put a switch on the green wire if you want to be able to turn your power supply off. We're just going to either leave these on all the time most likely, and if we need to turn them off, we will just unplug them from the wall. So I have all my wires here, which don't exactly want to stay together now. So let's see here. I think these stay together. All right, so those are now going to stay put now that I have them wrapped tight enough to each other. And we're going to solder this as well. And remember, when you're soldering, don't do it on your kitchen table because you will often drip solder, and not everyone likes little burn marks on their counter. So I'm being careful up here in our master control. You can see I've got a nice bead of solder on either of these wires. I've got our green power-up wire added with our grounds. I'm now going to tape both of these off so they cannot short out with anything else either. As you can see, I like to use electrical tape on everything here just to make sure it's not going to short. You could also use uh, wire nuts like I said earlier or heat shrink or whatever your preference is to keep things from shorting, and keep them together. I would not suggest just wrapping and taping them, because that will not stay together. 
might work for testing stuff, but it would not be very permanent. So, here we are. We have our power here now. Alright, so I now have all of my unused wires taped. I've got my power and ground and power on signal soldered together and all taped up, so it is time to reassemble the power supply. Now, if you remember, when I disassembled it, I disconnected the fan wire over here, so we have to make sure that gets back hooked up, because we don't want to burn out the power supply because it doesn't have a fan in it that work. So if you unplugged anything, make sure you plug it back in, tuck your wire tails back inside and those will not be needed. So we have our fan hooked up now. And we carefully lay all of our stuff back inside. And we can put this back together now. Alright, I now have the camera powered up. As you can see the viewfinder is lit up and you can see an image here coming from it. So we have this up and running now. So this is our professional camera power supply made from a computer AT supply. And remember, please rate, comment, subscribe, and donate Avalon at thegeekgroup.org. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.